Welcome to this episode of 10 Minute CME. I am Dr. Ram Subramanian. I am Consultant Infectious Diseases at Apollo Hospitals, Chennai. I am also the Medical Director of Capstone Multi Speciality Clinic in Chennai. Today, we shall see whether lab work or clinical diagnosis, which do we trust in the diagnosis of dengue? Dengue is probably the most significant mosquito borne viral disease. Over 128 countries of the world have people who live at risk of dengue, which may involve a population of over 4 billion people. About 96 to 100 million cases of symptomatic diseases are reported every year. This infection is caused by a flavivirus, which is a single stranded RNA virus which has both structural and non structural proteins. There are three structural and seven non structural proteins. The dengue virus is also present in four serotypes which are genetically same but antigenically distinct. How does this impact on the clinical presentation? During a person's lifetime, he can get dengue four times, which means the four serotypes can cause an infection once for every person and subsequent infections are generally believed to be more severe because of immunological response. The infection is transmitted in humans by the AIDS aegypti mosquito and surprisingly almost 70 to 80 percent of infections are asymptomatic. The spectrum of infections is very vast which varies from a mild non-specific acute undifferentiated febrile illness to severe fever with hemorrhagic manifestations and shock. As I said the secondary infections are usually the ones which can be severe clinically. If you look at the clinical diagnosis of dengue, it is seen that clinicians are generally, when they use clinical picture, diagnosis is more specific but less sensitive. The picture of dengue is very diverse and the diagnosis is challenging, especially because it depends on which stage of the infection the person presents. The occurrence of other infections like Japanese encephalitis, influenza and Zika which may confuse the issue and it also is challenging because diagnosis is time consuming and sometimes expensive. Most presentations are clinically mild with a slight fever but sometimes you can have severe illness. The disease presents abruptly in three identifiable phases. The initial presentation can be acute onset of fever with severe myalgia arthralgia, headache, retroorbital pain, nausea, vomiting and, some, and sometimes an exanthematous rash. The initial febrile phase lasts for about 4 to 7 days and in a significant number of people the infection resolves without further complications. Sometimes the patient goes into a critical phase in the next 24 to 48 hours which may be characterized by occurrence of warning signs quite often and then the person may develop complications of hemorrhagic fever or shock. The last stage is the recovery phase when the person slowly improves and becomes normal. The WHO definition of 2009 uses clinical and laboratory evidence to diagnose dengue. It has categorized dengue as dengue with or without warning signs and the second stage being severe dengue. A diagnosis clinically of probable dengue is made when a person who lives or travels to a deng dengue endemic area presents with fever and two of the following signs which may include nausea, vomiting, body aches and pains, rash, a positive tunicate test or leukopenia. This may be associated with warning signs which may include abnormal, abdominal persistent pain, persistent vomiting, fluid accumulation, mucosal bleed, lethargy, hepatomegaly and laboratory signs suggestive of a high hematocrit. A person is categorized as having severe dengue when there is evidence of plasma leakage which may lead to a circulatory collapse or shock. There may be severe bleeding or organ involvement in the form of hepatitis or other specific complications. If you look at the diagnosis, 
the tourniquet test is considered as a useful adjunct to the diagnosis, but unfortunately, time has shown that this is a very poor diagnostic test to use for diagnosing things. The number of hemorrhagic spots occurring in a one inch square area, typically in the forearm, after one minute of the application of tourniquet is used to consider the possibility of dengue. But studies have shown that the sensitivity of a tourniquet test is 58% and the specificity at best 71%. Even by increasing the area under the, for which you look at the hemorrhages away from the tourniquet, if you increase it to two inches, this does not make a difference in the diagnostic accuracy. The laboratory diagnosis may include isolation of virus, the reverse transcriptase PCR, the NS1 antigen capture, serology and sometimes using a combined approach. But in spite of using all these tests, there is still a deficiency in clearly diagnosing things. The timeline of biomarkers can be seen in the graph. The virus and the NS1 antigen are detected initially. The NS1 antigen may last up to seven to nine days during primary infection, but subsequently the NS1 antigen window period declines. The IgM antibodies starts between three to five days and the IgG antibodies may take seven to eight days to become evident. So depending on the timelines, the diagnostic tests are performed. In spite of the availability of several tests, there are still challenges in the laboratory diagnosis of dengue. For example, if you take the antigen tests, it has been shown that secondary infections of dengue because of the development of anamnestic antibodies against the NS1 antigen may shorter, shorten the detection window period of NS1. So the NS1 antigen can be identified only within the first one to three days at the most. If you look at the antibody tests of the serology, the timelines may vary. The IgM, which is generally present by day four or day five, sometimes takes longer and it may be undetectable in almost 20% of cases of secondary infection. It is also shown that IgM may persist for several months after an infection, thereby creating problems in subsequent episodes of dengue infections. Cross-reactivity against other flaviviruses, which may include Japanese encephalitis, yellow fever, and Zika may happen with antibody tests. There are also variations among commercially available kits in the diagnosis of dengue and standardization needs to be done better. The vaccination which is available for dengue now, which is not yet introduced in India, can also cause a positive serology and may interfere with the diagnosis of dengue. So keeping all this in mind, there is still a long way to go before we can say either the clinical diagnosis or laboratory diagnosis is preferable. So at the end of the day, I think we need to use both clinical acumen, especially when we have the prevalence of other undifferentiated febrile illnesses like flu, Zika, chikungunya around how we interpret it and use the laboratory tests cautiously and appropriately to ensure that we can come to a diagnosis of things. Thank you.